Testing audio, testing audio. How's my voice? Are there any crackles? Testing audio, testing audio. How's my voice? Are there any crackles? Hello, Haster. Oh yeah, I should have paused the game while I'm uh, waiting to start. <laughs> it is a lot of wind. And not the wind with the Y. Just letting people uh, filter in here. We'll we'll get started in a few minutes here. How's it going? By the way, Yeah, that seems to be about the way of things in the world, especially Europe. But, I mean, the U.S. and the rest of the world aren't doing much better either. We're still still not locked down here in Arizona, but, um, I don't know, things might change. Cases are on their way up pretty quickly. Yeah, maybe. I just, 
I don't understand why we can't be more proactive about it, you know? It seems like we wait for the cases to go bad before we start implementing measures to, to make it better. Whereas if we were more proactive about things, we could, uh, we could stop it before it got bad, you know? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that makes too much sense. Till Easter, huh? Well, hopefully that doesn't happen, but... You know, we still got our video games and our streams and stuff to keep us from feeling I too isolated, I hope. Yeah, 36 cases on the island when the population is 10,000, and they're shutting it down now until Easter because of that. I feel like in a small place like that, it would be a lot easier to do contact tracing and only shut down, you know, apartments and, and things that, that were exposed or about to be exposed preemptively, and you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have to shut everything down. And it wouldn't be too much of a logistics nightmare like it would be for a, a giant country. That's my thought, anyway. But I also understand how, like, a small island, or, well, maybe not that small if there's 10,000 people on it, um, how the people there might be afraid of it uh, spreading that much quick, more quickly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you need to shut everything down all over the place, um, but you can be smart about it and preemptively shut down and be very careful about letting people out and in of those areas. Oh, they shut down the whole country. I see. Yeah. That sucks. I don't believe that actually needs to happen. I mean, I've... I'm of the mind that it's better to be proactive about this stuff and get out in front of it, but I, I also don't think you need to shut down everything um, and be too wide about it. That just doesn't seem necessary to me. But I have to believe that the people that are making the mis decisions are more and better informed than I am, so <laughs> I guess all you have to do, or the only thing you can do really is just have faith in the leadership at that point, but uh, I don't know, I guess that's just not the world we live in these days. Yeah, I mean, I have to believe if corruption were the thing, though, they wouldn't be, um, if, I mean, the corruption were, like, the the reason behind shutting everything down, um, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I feel like if, if anything, uh, 
the corruption leading to a decision would lead to keeping things open against people's uh, better judgment uh, in an effort to keep the economy going and keep money flowing. I might be oversimplifying things, but that's what's going through my head about it right now. Okay, let's see. Looks like we got uh, four people on. A um, little bit lighter, but you know, with the with the news and stuff going on, I'm sure people are glued to their screens, uh, and not the screens that are playing my rinky dink little Skyrim stream. So <laughs> let's see. They took that decision based on a mathematical model that predicted over 2,000 cases in a month if things kept going as they were. But mathematics can be faulty, as we all know. Yeah, sure. Um, well, at least they're using a mathematical model and taking a scientific approach to it, and they're not erring on the side of money over health. Uh, that's something, at least. Uh, hello, Tra Trilliant. Your name is hard to say. Um, I want to say so early in the morning, but it's almost 11 a.m. over here, and I have no excuse. Uh, so hello, Trilliant. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Let's switch to the game. And I'm actually going to reload, reload the save because I heard Jagasta's tummy are rumbling and I've been sitting there in TFC mode for a while waiting for this stream to get started here. How are you doing, Trailiant? How is uh, little Trailiant? Of course, he's probably not so little anymore. Yeah, so about the mic thing, um, I have um, heavily reduced my bitrate going out. And I did a whole bunch of audio testing on it, and I have heard some uh, intermittent crackling on it, but it hasn't been nearly as bad as it was uh, at higher bit rates. So um, I think I am at the point where I'm just willing to compromise now and uh, just accept the crackling for what it is. Hopefully it doesn't get that bad. Um, and uh, it tends to get better after a little bit too. The problem is I am on um, a cable internet provider um, and it's pretty quick. It's uh, I'm getting 150 megabits down right now uh, and I'm getting about nine or 10 megabits up. The problem with cable is it's burstable. So if people are using the internet a lot for uploads, um, then that nine megabits isn't going to go so far anymore. Um, and previously I was uh, streaming at 1080p 60 frames per second, which takes up that full nine gigabytes, or I'm sorry, nine megabits of, um, of bandwidth. So if somebody else on my node tries to upload something, um, then that's gonna dip down and I'm gonna start getting uh, artifacting. And it seems like the artifacting is, is prioritized on audio. So that's where the crackling is coming from. And that's my best guess because I'm not getting these, uh, these crackles in uh, local audio recordings. Uh, it's only when I stream. Um, but it seems to be mitigated quite a bit when I, because now I've, I've actually set the bit rate all the way down to five megabits per second. I'm running 720p, uh, 60 frames per second. Um, I tried to switch that down to 30 frames per second, and that seemed to do uh, a lot better with the audio, but uh, the quality was just unacceptable to me. See, Little Trillian's doing okay. He's been having trouble sleeping the last few days, which made us all a little tired. Yeah, I bet. I, I think um, a big part of at least what I've heard, I don't have kids, but uh, I have friends that have kids, and it seems like their experience with how easy or hard it is to take care of the kid hinges heavily upon how much sleep that kid is getting. <laughs> Which makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so I, I'm sorry, Haster, about the crackling. Uh, it just is what it is for right now. Um... 
we'll just have to deal with it uh, and it'll probably likely clear up at some point soon um, and then it might start crackle crackling again a little bit more okay hello magus 80 how's it going my friend not bad here not bad here um sounds like uh yeah keep me in the know on the crackling um if it's if it's reasonable if it's just a little bit of crackling i'm gonna deal with it if it gets like so bad to where it's like you can't even bear to to listen to it then then let me know i'll i'll fiddle with some some quality settings again try to get things back down Okay. Well, Magus is here, so I think that means we can get started, right? <laughs> Don't want to start the party without him. Yeah, crackling there as well. Is it is it like bad though? Because I mean beyond um really just butchering my my settings and my quality I, I don't know how to at this point how to how to manage it i might actually consider um a move to twitch i or at least testing twitch to see if if it has as bad uh a problem with with audio artifacting as, as youtube is But yeah, I've I've set my bitrate all the way down to five megabits per second, which is is down from nine megabits per second before. Um, and in my testing, I was getting a little bit of crackling, uh, but it wasn't all the time, and it and it wasn't nearly as bad as it used to be. And I'm also running um, well, not locally. I'm running 1440p, uh, 60 frames per second on my machine, but um, but the streaming quality is 720p, uh, 60 frames per second. Going down to 30 frames per second seemed to fix the issue completely for me, but um, it, the, the quality was, was not acceptable to me, so. So hopefully the crackling subsides a little bit. It, it did in my testing. It, it came and went a little bit. Um, two things. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. What did we do last time? I actually don't even remember. We punched some trolls in the face. We made our way down um, from the Shrine of Azura uh, to uh, Winterhold. Um, I think we completed the quest. Uh, we do have the star now. And in order to curry more favor with Azura, we need to keep filling Azura's star. And I've done that off camera a little bit. Um, and I've actually been using these soul gems to enchant Jugasta's gear a little bit. So now, uh, let's see, I've actually enchanted the boots with 5% uh, faster movement speed, which helps with defense and, and mobility in general, but I also have the perk in the light armor tree that converts a certain amount of movement boost into raw unarmed damage. So... This is two birds with one stone. Um, and off camera, Jagasta spent a little time in Windhelm. He took care of a couple of um, a giant camps that I didn't want to be, you know, totally canon because, you know, they're they're generally not very aggressive unless uh, somebody encroaches on their territory. But, you know, I, I wanted to see where Jagasta was in terms of strength of character and also needed to get some, some grand soul gem or souls in Azura's star. Um, so I did that off camera. It's not really going to count toward his story, but um, I, I kind of felt the need to do it anyway in terms of just, you know, a litmus test for uh, Jagasta's strength and what he can do on his own. Um, turns out that he is strong enough to take on some mammoths and giants without too much of an issue. Uh, so that's good. Uh, he also, while in Windhelm, did some wood chopping um, and things like that for money, uh, and got to know the people a little bit, and uh, talked to the alchemist here. Um, geez, what's that guy's name? Oh, I'm drawing a blank. 
Norellian, yes, that's correct. Uh, Norellian here, he seems to be on his last legs, um, and he is obsessed with finding this white file, and we offer to do it for him because we're, we're a cool fella. So yes, Haster, we are after the white file. So let's go do that, shall we? We'll take along our dudes with us here. Uh, let's not loot the, the urns. I think Jagasta would have more respect for the dead than that, even if they are filthy dragon cultists. <laughs> we will check um, for enchanted items still. I, I still do need some enchantments and um, still looking for forgotten magic tomes, particularly Phoenix Strike. Okay, I can't seem to equip my weapons here, so I might have to reload. Hey, there's Strudel. Hello, Strudel. How you doing, my friend? Okay, I am having controller issues here. I cannot seem to... Okay, I might have to restart my game here. I am running Gamepad++, which is an SKSE plugin that uh, provides more uh, hotkeys and, and better access to it through a controller. Um, but every once in a while, that doesn't load correctly, and I, I lose my ability to uh, sheathe and unsheathe my weapons. Yes, we do have a wild trailiant with us today. Oh, well, I hope um, Strudel the cat is okay. And that Strudel the person is okay dealing with uh, the Strudel the cat issues. Um, during Amazon Day, I did get a nice NVMe M2 hard drive. Um, I am not considering moving everything off the current SSD <laughs> to put it on there, um, but it should make things a little faster to load. You know, once I do rebuild my load order for Skyrim, I have a nicer hard drive to put that on and load times should... Uh, perk up considerably, I think. Yeah, dealing with pet issues. There we go, now we got we got our sheath. An unsheath business working. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do is enable uh, death alternative and see if that hurts uh, script lag at all. Uh, I think the script lag issues that I was having was with signature equipment. Um, I just had to disable enable the, and enable the mod and that, that fixed the vast majority of the script lag issues that I was getting. So hopefully I can re-enable this mod without any issues and uh, continue on with the role-playing goodness that it was um, with each death that we encountered. Let's see, Strudel's an old man, so we're anticipating the end anyway, but the last couple days he's had a gut issue. Ugh. Man, that sucks. I'm sorry, Strudel. Just stand still. Ah! Where did you come from? God, he was sneaky for a big old bright white bear. Okay, what do we got? We can use this poor fella's claws and his fat. What time is it? 9.41, so it's still early enough that we can actually harvest his ingredients as well. Maybe we'll make something cool out of his pelt too. Uh, off camera, I did do some spring cleaning in Jagasta's inventory. He really needed it. Uh, every once in a while, you know, you just gotta go through and do a whole sale um, removal of a bunch of crap that's that's in there. 
his encumbrance was was becoming an issue, <laughs> an actual uh, gameplay encumbrance. I love uh, Rumarin. Oh yeah, I took on Rumarin. Um, I don't know if I did that on stream, but um, I feel like. Oh yeah, where's where's Erendur? Yeah, so we sent Erendur on his way. Um, there wasn't much Erendur was going to learn from us, but you know we we had been through some stuff with Erendur at that point, um, and we did learn a bit about Mara from him. Um, so that's my sort of roleplay reason why he's gone. But uh, for personal reasons, uh, Rumarin is just way better of, of a follower in terms of dialogue and personality and things like that. So I wanted to make room for Rumarin. Um, and then while I exploring um, the Windhelm area, uh, we came across Rumarin at Yorgrim's Overlook, and I just had to take him along. He's actually probably my favorite follower that I've encountered from interesting NPCs. So I like to take him along. And there is some, like... I don't know if it's it's a full-on interaction between these two, but uh, you can ask them each what they think about the other, and there's some unique dialogue along with that. He was definitely over cucumbered. He was having issues with the size of his cucumber. Oh, I said I wasn't going to loot the urns. I got to stop doing that. Got to stop looting the urns. Okay, this looks dangerous. Hello, Caladran. Welcome aboard, friend. Hope you're doing well. Uh, one thing I want to do is equip the tweak commands power because I want to start doing some scouting with uh, Jagasta here. Um, I don't think he wants to put these people in danger, so he wants to know what he's getting these people into before they just go charging in. Uh, I want him to be just a little bit more careful. And of course, uh, you know, I, I know I'm falling into the same trap that every single Skyrim character uh, runs into and that you know you always become a sneak all right you guys wait here for a second I'm gonna scout ahead and we're gonna see what we got oh there's a trap and there's a dude I think we can take him out on our own Whee easy peasy Anything good in here? We'll take the fragment. Nothing else worth it. Uh, let's see here. Alright guys, it's safe. Just watch out for that trap there. Uh, Caladran not feeling too well at the moment. Okay, well I hope you feel better soon. And maybe a Jigasta stream will help cheer you up a little bit, huh? Hey, it could happen. Ah, no. Don't see me. Don't see me. There we go. Oh, and there's a wild Loki in the chat as well. Welcome, Loki. How you doing? How are things in Lokiville? Is Loki doing okie dokie? 
Sorry, I'm being a little hokey. Oh, if you're angry, then my, uh... My little teasings probably did not help. Sorry, sir. Ooh, a block skill book. Uh, do I already have that one? Still looking for forgotten magic tomes. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought uh, Zora had some blackface issues. <laughs> some, some missing textures or some load order issues. Eek. But it's not. It was just the lighting and her, uh, and her scar. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Loki Phil equals Asgard. Orcish boots of the ox. Okay, I think I have capacity already, but I'll take it just in case. Probably use that. The rest of this stuff too. Um, Zora uses the Justicier arrows, so we'll take those as well. And I think Jagasta's okay looting the chests, but not the urns. Oh, jeez, that guy snuck up on us. Okay. Oh, you did you uh, have a missing delivery for a bed? How do you lose something as big as a bed? Or they just delayed it? Calg. <laughs> Calgal sounds like something you do when you have a bad uh, respiratory infection. Getting that sneak skill up there. Ah! Okay. Roll through the, uh, the foos there. Oh, Scourge is tough, man. Oh, who's that? Get him, Rumarin. Okay, he's pretty handy with those conjured blades. He's not completely useless. He uh, has a fair amount of self-deprecating humor, and he presents himself kind of as a, uh, a wuss, but you know, from what Jagasta's seeing right now is he can handle himself quite well, actually. You know, it occurs to me, too, that maybe Jagasta wouldn't be um, preemptively killing these um, uh, sleeping Draugr. He's not a violent person. Tries to avoid violence, so... I don't know. And then his relationship with Kanarthi probably leads him to have a, a fair amount of respect for the dead. Oh, you know what? We've been through this with Jagasta before. I think he uh, actually determined that, you know, if these dead walkers are either actively avoiding Kanarthi and her uh, path to the um, sands beyond the moons, um, that they're probably bad folks, or if they are being forsaken by Kanarthi, which is the other possibility, that they are probably bad folks as well. So I don't think we need to feel guilty about dispatching these, these, uh, these Draugr. 
but we're still gonna have some respect for them even if you know we don't feel even if we do feel compelled to send them back to their rightful place amongst the actual dead so yeah we're gonna go with that we'll kill off the draugr I had forgotten because it had been a while Tomorrow you'll be ascending. Ah, uh, jeez, Loki. I can I can only guess, and most of them uh, are not very family friendly. Friendly. <laughs> I'll let your imagination run away with that. If you're talking about Stu's stream, I think that's the day after tomorrow. So what parts of you are, are ascending tomorrow? I, I, I don't know. Ah, I see. Already a divine. So we raid a simple Nord ruin. Oops, I cut off uh, I cut off Rumarin. There's no way to save it. <laughs> I wasn't trying to save it. I was just trying to avoid getting too graphic with it. <laughs> My most family friendly guess is that you're moving to an upstairs apartment. <laughs> I can get the drop on him. Oh! I'm gonna goose him. I'm gonna put a cat paw right in his butt crack. Could you imagine being a Draugr, avoiding the afterlife, and having to live an eternity with, uh, you know, those dry, creaky bones? Uh, none of the mortal comforts that we've all become so accustomed to and then having a cat sneak up behind you and put his sharp claws right in the uh, right in the butt crack credit card you you'd be like I avoided the afterlife for this One thousand years of death, yeah. It grouts ass fur. <laughs> ass fur. Okay. All right. So that one got a little aggressive, but never saw us coming. So that's good. Ooh, and we got to level up too. We'll get through the rest of this before we uh, start looking at our perks, though. And if the Cural Mill encounter goes really poorly, then we can always use the uh, the level up as a sort of like divine epiphany or something—a gift from Kinnereth to to save our our ass fur. <laughs> That was epic. I think we've all felt like doing that in some situation at some point in our lives, right? But, uh... You know, Robard... Whoa, where did you come from? God, he scared me. Robard just did it. He gives no Fs. Alright, where the hell am I going here? Should I just head to Helgen? Seriously. <laughs> the hint is fecking goats. Fecking goats. Okay, I see what I did. 
I didn't go far enough down this corridor. <laughs> I feel like we're all heading to Helgen in one way or another, Strudel. Do I have my night eye on? Yeah, I do. It's not making things much better. More visible, but it looks not great. Alright, you restless bastard. Does it smell like burning ass fur in here to anybody else? What if one has already been to Helgen? Well, just because you've been to Helgen doesn't mean you can't head back to Helgen. Repeat visits to Helgen. Um, Alright, you guys ready? These guys don't look too tough, but I just want you to be on your guard because we're going in guns blazing. Don't get flanked. Oh, he got a good swipe in on me there. I forgot I didn't have my block active. Tried to get a time block on it, but uh, I had uh, Fire Blast still in my hand there. But we had enough health regeneration going that it uh, didn't really even hurt. If we can't make you laugh, Loki, then what are we good for? Just eating a jogger. Just <laughs> a jogger, yeah. Uh, I think Jagasta has the uh, has the complicated art of casual yeeting down. It's very hard to yeet casually, but uh, he does it well. Anybody else? Ooh, Blight Curse. I know somebody in the chat who would make very good use of this, but uh, I don't think it's Shigasta's kind of thing. We'll take it anyway. I think we're going to specialize in restoration, uh, fire magic for destruction, and some alteration for like flesh spells and stuff. And so far, even with death alternative running, uh, I'm still able to get these these dodges in on time. Uh, it's, it feels very responsive, so that's that's promising. That is very promising. And I think I just leveled up uh, Fire Blast as well, didn't I? I'll have to take a look at that soon. Yeah, Loki, I know we're crackling a little bit. Um, I, I've mitigated it as much as I can. I think we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, I've lessened, or I've reduced my uh, outgoing bit rate to 5 megabits per second. It was up at like 9 before. And I think what's going on is... When my uh, upload speeds drop a little bit because I'm on a shared cable line, um, that I start getting artifacting and, and it's prioritizing the audio and it, it manifests in a crackle. Yeah, so um, it, it's uh, I can reduce the frame rate to 30, but in my testing, um, the quality just didn't, it wasn't acceptable to me. So in my mind, I'm going to deal I don't see a there's cure all mill in my mind uh, I would rather just deal with a little bit of crackling instead of have to deal with such poor uh, image quality and in my testing the crackling did go away it would come back a little bit but it would go away for a while so I'll go back and, and watch the stream to see how bad it is, and I'll consider uh, reducing my, my bitrate even further uh, and do some more testing on that too, but um, for right now I, I think it just is what it is. 
Uh, yeah, I actually think that the addition to Oslain using, you know, the swords, uh, the blades, and, and even his uh, feet at some point is a, is a cool look for him. I agree. I am enjoying that as well, Magus. I'm a big fan of hybrid builds, so to speak. Not pure mages, not pure warriors, but uh, a mix in between. And throw in some rogue in there every now and then, too. And you got yourself a pretty compelling build. Ancient texts, we will grab those. Don't need the gold. I think we're good on gold. Yeah, we're definitely good on gold. We have almost 40,000. Makes you wonder where he's keeping all those coins, right? Ooh, okay, no, I gotta stop wondering where he's keeping all those coins. Bad idea. Oh, that's not Erendur anymore, uh, Loki. That is now Rumarin. He's uh, probably my favorite follower from from uh, interesting NPCs. Uh, Erendur went on his way, uh, and we picked up Rumarin instead. That happened off, off stream, off camera, so you didn't miss anything. And I still do have Night Eye, but it's uh, it's not helping me out much here. Like some nice alchemical ingredients, though. Alright, this looks like the white file that Norelian is looking for, but it looks a bit damaged. It's got some cracks. Um, almost as big as the crack in that one Draugr's butt. Alright. Yeah, Magus, that's weird, right? It's like the opposite way. It's like he started out as an archer and then went to melee. It's usually the opposite way, right? You start out as, as a melee character and then end up being an archer. Alchemy, we can use that for sure. Don't need to carry the book around with us, though. Uh, looks like a lot of alchemical ingredients around here, though, that Jagasta not feel bad about taking. It's not a burial urn, so... Doesn't feel like he's stealing from the dead here. He's just using ingredients that Cural Mill will not be able to make use of anymore. Yeah, I took the bowl. I've been all trying to be careful not to take the bowl. Just grabbed it anyway. I'll just do the old major slack thing and just mash the button, picking everything up. I think Zora wants a kiss now, too. She's right up in our mug. Everybody wants a smooch from the Kung Fu Kitty. Orcs. Bretons, Nords, doesn't matter. Yeah, it's Todd's fault. I don't know why uh, Todd Howard always makes us take the bowl. Or the wooden plate. Alright, so this is added in by CACO. I don't think it actually adds the, uh, the knowledge of these alchemical effects to those ingredients, but sometimes it's nice to have the, the notes anyway. Um, Alcanil, my dark alchemist character, um, he keeps uh, he keeps all these notes on a bookshelf in Ryak's End for easy reference. Everyone likes a kitty. Well, you know, some people aren't really cat people. Ask my wife. And, uh, you know, Sometimes cats are just evil. It just happens. My uncle had a cat. Uh, he found him as a kitten on the side of the road and, and had to take him in. Because, you know, you can't bear to see a kitten stranded on the side of the road. Um, and it was real cute. It was very playful. Um, and we jokingly named it uh, Hannibal. 
because we thought it would be funny to give this sweet, innocent little kitten an evil name. And it turned out that the cat was actually evil. I don't know if it was the name we gave him that made him evil, but uh, it did end up happening, for sure. The cat ended up being huge. I mean, this cat must have been, you know, 20 pounds or more, I'm, I'm thinking. I don't know if that sounds ridiculous. I'm not really a cat owner. But uh, the cat was definitely bigger than my 20 pound dog, even though it might have been mostly fur. Who knows? I'm going to run out of lockpicks here. Um, but it would do the thing where, you know, the cat would act all sweet to you. He'd come up. He would jump up on the table in front of you and, and kind of like start rolling over and purring and everything. And then as soon as you like touched him, you would go into attack mode. Um, claw you all up real good. It was terrifying. Terrifying, traumatizing. Hannibal. And um, they didn't want to get the cat declawed because, you know, that's, that's kind of awful to do to a cat, it turns out. Um, and they didn't want the cat to be defenseless if it if it got out. Um, but you know we we have a few pounds less flesh on various limbs now for it, and the cat just would not. I mean, there was no way you're getting those uh, those caps on on the cat on that cat's claws anyway. It's worth. It, it was more worth taking the, uh, the gradual cuts and scrapes than it was, you know, getting it all done in one lump sum. <laughs> you use the, the cat for curls? That's, uh, that's quite resourceful of you there, Strudel. My wife and I were bored one day, so we had a contest um, to see who could lay flat on the ground with our head uh, elevated, just using the strength of our neck muscles. Um, so we're laying there flat on the ground. Where Where is my map marker here? Okay. So we're laying there flat on the ground. I feel like I missed a shortcut to get back out the door, but that's okay. Um, so we lift our heads up off the ground and immediately my dog comes over and puts her front paws on my forehead, trying to smush my head back down. <laughs> um, she didn't like what we were doing there. She wanted me to relax, I guess. Um, but yeah, she was basically doing a plank on top of my head. It was completely unfair. Uh, of course, it ended up working to my advantage because my wife started uh, cackling uncontrollably and uh, lost all control of the muscles in her neck and her head fell down and I ended up winning anyway. Um, so yeah, when you're stuck at home, you, you find some weird things to, uh, to entertain yourself with. That's for sure. Oh yeah, no, the favorites thing isn't even a contest. Uh, our, my puppy is a, a daddy's, a daddy's girl for sure. And my wife hates it. Hates it. Well, my wife actually uh, rescued the dog. It's always fun to go ambling through oh, that's not a cat. It was a cringer. <laughs> the He-Man battle cat. Yeah. Um, no, my wife actually uh, rescued the dog um, the same week that we had our first date. So it was just her and the dog for a while before we moved in. Um, but it was pretty clear early on that the dog <laughs> heavily preferred me. And, uh, yeah, that didn't make my wife too happy. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and take a leisurely stroll back to Windhelm here. And turn this thing back in. Okay, it looks like we have a traveling merchant with an entourage. That's what's going on here? Yeah. Need something? Oh no, just some adventures. What are you guys doing? I need something. No, I'm good. Just being friendly. And we got a lone Imperial soldier here, huh? She's real quiet too. 
Uh, cat got your tongue? Get it? Because Khajiit? <laughs> okay. I'll stop, I'm sorry. God, I really hate myself sometimes. Why do you guys let me say stuff like that? Talk about cringer, right? Cat cuts are a sign of affection. <laughs> Sorry, catching up on the chat here as I'm blindly following this path. Yeah, uh, dogs respond more to the sound of the male voice. Yeah, as it asserts dominance. Um, yeah, I've actually read that same thing, that they respond a little more to the deeper, um, more percussive voices of males in general. Um, but, you know, she's not afraid of me. She, the dog is actually super affectionate with me, and that's what makes my wife the most jealous. I mean, I can get the dog to do things through verbal commands much easier than my wife can. My wife has to get, like, mad before her voice is assertive enough to get the dog to do anything. <laughs> Um, she's, that's something that she has to work on, honestly, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's the affection stuff. It's like the dog will walk over and put her face up against mine or, you know, put her little chin across my neck or something and just melts my heart. My wife thinks it's the cutest thing ever, but then she gets jealous that the dog doesn't do that stuff to her. Or the dog will come up and, and lay in my armpit and then put her like little cheek up against my lips wanting kisses. It's the most adorable thing ever. I've never had a dog that liked being kissed as much as this one. Her damn mill. Her damn mill. Oh, I've heard of this one before. Watch out, Divine. Poor Godrier curses you all for giving him life. I like this guy. Who do you think you are? The man doing your job? Ooh, Leifer, my man. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've just wanted to go off on, on like somebody that I'm working with that just is not pulling their own weight. He just became my own personal hero. Oh, so your rabbit had a favorite, huh? Looky. Sounds like your uh, your cat does too. Ah, uh, so once your voice became more manly, Strudel, that's when that's when your pets started preferring you, huh? <laughs> Sometimes uh, life can be stranger than fiction. Can't make this stuff up. No, I don't think your voice is manly at all. I'm just teasing you. Oh, if you pass dogs on the street, they do? Yeah. <laughs> A cat magnet. Yeah, you know, I have been too. Um... I just, I just tend to prefer dogs. I like their energy a little bit more. Um, but I still love cats, too. My grandma had cats. Um, we'll go to friends' and family's houses and stuff, and, and yeah, the cats tend to, you know, be clingy. I think it's because I'm... Um, I'm uh, generous with the affection and the scratches and stuff. I'll give them all the attention they want, you know, after the rest of the people get kind of bored and, and over petting the, petting the cat or the dog. They know I'm good for it. Okay, Norellian, your search is over. I found your thing, but uh, I don't think... Don't 
think you can barter with me like I'm one of those damn Last girl. The hell happened here? Oh, you know, off camera I also did uh, Blood on the Ice. I finished that up before. Oh no, maybe I did that on camera. I don't remember now. I think that's an aftermath of the uh, of the fight with uh, Calixto for this quest. See, this is what I get for doing a special Halloween stream with Resident Evil 3 and changing the game up. It's like... Still don't believe me, huh? It's been two weeks now since my last Jagasta stream, and I don't remember where we left off. Or what we did before. Yeah, but this isn't like boiling an egg. There's a reason only a handful of people can do it. And I'm one of those people. Just watch and learn. I'm watching. Yeah, look, it's a byproduct of, of the load order. I, I haven't been able to get rid of it. You won't be laughing when your health is fading and The squares on the snow. It was a lot easier to learn just to deal with it than, than to keep trying to fix it. <laughs> hey, William. Glad you made it. Welcome aboard. We have enough gold left over for the ride to Winterhold. How does a nice, leisurely carriage ride sound to that sore neck of yours? Save it. I'd rather you buy me a drink. But fine, you convince me. I'll go get my things. Silver tongue on that lizard, huh? Um, all right, hey, where's your boss? My master can be a bit short-tempered, but I've learned so much from him. Hmm. I'd better get going. Is he upstairs? Ah, there he is. Warming himself by the fire. Must you bother me now? I've almost figured out where it is. You have figured out where it is. In fact, it's right here now. But you're not gonna like it. This uh, it matches every description of the file that I've found in lore. Yeah, uh, William, I've no way of tried following them How for a short know? amount of time, and, and at some point I just lost track of them. I don't know if, if their little quest line comes to a head at any point. Uh, let's see here. I mean, why you gotta blame a cat, huh? I mean, I do have a compulsion to knock things off of shelves, I will admit. I mean, I'm just a cat. There's a limit to my restraint. But this was not the case with this thing, I promise. It was already like this when I found it. Figures. I doubt you have sufficient knowledge to harm the file, even if you want to do. Either way, this is the end of it. Now, if you'll excuse me. I'm not quite in the mood to entertain guests. I trust you can show yourself out. Here's for your trouble. <gasps> Five coins? Guys. He gave me five septums. What are we going to spend it on? Oh man, I can't wait to, to go to the market and figure out what I can spend this five septums on. Thank you for your help. I know my master can be a bit short at times. Uh, this one is happy to help. Here, you should have this. Even though the file was damaged, I still think your efforts deserve reward. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'm five hundred. Now he's just showing off. I can make his final days a bit less painful. Uh, more fireworks. What is it with just random fireworks? Sorry. Yeah, I tend to agree, Loki. There's a time and a place, and it's not I'm going to find whoever did a random Saturday <laughs> that has no holiday. I wanted to thank you again for the mince pie you sent over. And did somebody say pie? I enjoyed it. After what you and Tova have been through, it was the least I could do. My little Frigga loved to cook, but she was terrible at it. Then one day, out of nowhere, 
She made the most amazing leek soup. She watched while we ate it, and when she saw how much we loved it, to the she was so Best so proud. In Skyrim, if you he ate me. his daughter's leek soup? That sounds disgusting. I mean, my heart goes out to him losing his daughter, but... Your own daughter's leek soup? What a freak. Uh, Alright, I heard somebody said pie, so... Do you have any pie for sale? Oh, we got some dumplings. Alright, Halevi, I gotta know. Are your dumplings made with real dump? Because I don't want the fake dump in my dumplings. I will only eat the highest quality dumplings made with authentic, genuine dump. Hey, if that guy's eating leek soup, he started it. Oh, there's a meat pie. Sounds pretty good. We'll go with the meat pie. Get the cream. <laughs> Kitties love cream. Yeah, that's that's good. And we also have a drug of a jug of fresh milk. Yeah, Strudel, how has your moisture levels been? Uh, sorry, that was a very inappropriate question. <laughs> I'm talking about precipitation in Colorado. Okay, I think we got plenty of food here. Because if like you're droughting, <laughs> if you're droughting as hard as us, I, then fireworks are really not a good idea. Yeah, I've seen some forecasts here too that it's supposed to rain, but uh, you know I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, okay, what's next here? Um, trying to think if there's anything else we can do in Windhelm. We do have that level up. We have to level up our uh, Fire Blast. Uh, and then we'll have more training to take in either Pickpocket or um, Destruction Magic. Yeah, fireworks now. E don't like it. Loki, we would definitely gladly take any of the rain that you want to give us. Yeah, there has been some rain in the forecast previously this year, but at least at my house, it's just become dust storms with very little to no rain. So it's basically just raining dirt instead of water. And that doesn't help things out at all. We need some actual rain. We need more than some. We need a lot. Um, okay, so yeah, let's take care of this business here. Um, what time is it? 4.07. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait till dusk here. Do a quick save just in case I miscalculate the math here. Meditation. Since we are now worshiping Azura, there's a small window of opportunity that we get for praying slash meditating to her. We're at 45.6%, I think is what it said up there, which is good. Uh, let's see. Health hasn't been an issue. The, the spells that we have hooked up to Okado's recital right now are pretty good in terms of keeping us alive. Uh, Magicka, we've been focusing mainly on uh, Fire Blast, which is pretty cheap. Uh, especially as our destruction level goes up more and more. So, I think we're okay with Magicka for now. 
Uh, we do have to cast Soul Cloak, and that, that takes a big chunk of it, but we usually cast Soul Cloak only in certain situations and uh, before we actually start combat, so our Magicka Regeneration usually fills us up uh, before we get started with the fight anyway, and the Soul Cloak is still active, so I think I'm just going to go Stamina, pour it into Stamina, get the damage boost from it. Now we have two perks. I think I banked one of them. Destruction, I don't think I have much more I can take here. I got dual casting, which makes a certain amount of sense if I'm going for the whole Street Fighter Hadouken thing with the Fire Blast. Um, it'll make it stronger, but then we'll probably also have to invest more attribute points into Magicka, and I don't really want to have to do that. But I also like having the option of the unarmed attack in the right hand as well, so maybe not. Um, the force of nature makes a certain amount of sense to me too, I feel like. Kanarthi's influence will be stronger on Jagasta during a clear day, uh, so maybe his fire spells would be a little stronger. That's interesting. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, it looks like we can take this to fire spells reduce the fire resistance of their targets. That would be quite powerful as well. So that basically makes our fire attacks 20% stronger if the uh, enemy that we're pelting with these fire blasts is resistant to fire. Which not many actually are. But something to consider. Um, let's see, does anybody in the chat actually know when you reduce fire resistance? Does that actually uh, make people who aren't fire resistance weaker to fire? Anybody know? Anybody know? Restoration is at 50. Oh yeah, Loki, if you can pull some strings in Asgard and, and get us some rain, that would be awesome. I would forever bask in the Mischief God's glory. Warrior's Flame I like a lot as, as sort of a monk archetype. Especially in terms of Kanarthi, like Kanarthi's winds can come along and, and sort of invigorate people in the party to uh, to fight harder or to recover faster. Yeah, William, I'd gladly take some of your reign too. Scotland gets uh, quite damp, doesn't it? Alteration, let's see, we can boost an attribute by 50 points, that's nice. I don't know that we actually need it yet. Nullifier is quite powerful, but uh, I don't know if it fits with, with the whole monk the whole monk business. That's more of a, an anti-mage or um, like warlock type thing. Or witch hunter even. Um, so I don't know about that. We'll see. Block is at 85. Do I have anything I can take here? Block runner might be good, but if I'm blocking, I'm usually doing a timed block and only hold the block down for a second or two. Uh, so it becomes more of a parry. I don't tend to run around with uh, with my arm up in a block. So I don't know how useful that would actually be. Uh, what's after uh, run block or block runner? This might be useful though. Giving allies 250 points of armor after a time block. Um, but I might start doing some more solo play with Jagasta at some point, so I, I don't know how much uh, having a follower is going to... to um, I don't know if it's going to be a thing going forward for too much longer. And we don't have a shield, so 
Actually, I don't know with the with the unarmed blocking mod that I'm running. I don't know if if the implementation of it technically counts as a shield because it seems like it's just an invisible shield, right? Interrupting an attack with a power bash with a shield knocks the attacker to the ground. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on this and maybe I'll test that off camera at some point. Let's make sure I have a perk for it. Uh, let's see, light armor is at 81. Do we have anything at level 80 in light armor that I can take? Survival Instinct and Spell Dancer. When struck by an unblocked attack or hostile spell in combat, gain 10% movement speed for 6 seconds. So 10% movement speed ends up being quite a big... Um, unarmed damage bonus. Let me see if I can find... Here it is. Uh, additionally, if your movement speed is increased, they do 2% damage per 1% movement speed. So, 2% damage per 1% movement speed. If I'm gaining 10% movement speed, that's another 20% unarmed damage if I get hit by a spell or attack. Which does happen. Let's see, War Dancer, your agility enables you to strike more effectively, granting 20% more attack damage and critical damage if wearing all light armor. This effect is lost for 6 seconds. Enhancing the art of the yeet, yes. Um, this effect is lost for 6 seconds whenever you get struck by an unblocked attack or a hostile spell. So, Survival Instinct will help uh, hedge my bets as far as that goes. I I'll lose the bonus from War Dancer, but I'll gain the bonus from Survival Instinct. A uh, war dancer also improves elemental spells and effects by the same amount. That's nice too, especially considering that uh, with hissing dragon now I'm doing fire damage on my unarmed attacks. By the same amount, what amount is that? Twenty percent. I think I have to take this one. I'm going to hold off on Survival Instinct for now because I want a perk to test that uh, that Block Basher perk as well. Uh, and I'm going to have to start looking into Pickpocket and... Um, well, just Pickpocket soon here too because I want... Uh, this guy right here. Can Pickpocket equipped weapons? If the target is sleeping, can Pickpocket any equipped item? Um, I want Jagasta to get to the point in his martial arts training where he can disarm people and uh, force unarmed hand-to-hand -hand combat situations. I think that would be a really cool thing. And when we get into more solo play, uh, and I, I want to do some like dungeon clear videos and stuff with Jagasta with some compelling novel gameplay, um, and I think this will be a big part of it. But as you can see, we're we're nowhere close to that yet. We need a lot of a lot of pickpocket training, and because Jagasta is is very law abiding for a Khajiit anyway, um, he doesn't get a lot of practice. So we're gonna have to kind of focus on on just getting it through training, I guess, for a bit until we can unlock that uh, unlock this perk. So not taking that one just yet, and I'm probably. I will need the base mastery perks, though. Just not ready for it yet. Okay, so I'm going to bank that other perk, and we'll move on. Uh, let's see. Well, now I need to do some training. So do I want Silda for pickpocket, or do I want Woundfirth for destruction? I think we've been focusing more on destruction lately. So I think I would like to... Focus on that a little bit more. It's kind of negligible the the skill differences here. Um, so let's see, thirty six. Once I get to forty, what can I take? Ignite the ground under their targets for thirty seconds. I don't know if that fits the whole monk thing. Flash fire. Fire spells have fifteen percent chance to ignite the target for two seconds. The next instance of fire damage that hits an ignited target. Detonates, dealing 100% more damage and causing living target to flee in flames. I like that a lot. But that's 50, that's not 40. Um, 
you know, the other part of the equation here is I think that destruction uh, levels up far slower than pickpocket. So I think uh, the wise decision is to train in destruction. And I try to be wise a lot more than I try to not be wise. General rule of thumb. Won't give us a straight answer. He's a true north. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. How's the crackling sounding too, by the way? Uh, is it getting better, worse, about the same? Crackle check. Oh, we can enchant a new piece of gear here, too. We have an enchanting table. If Ulfric needs a favor, he has it. Anyone Still crackling, huh? Well Sorry, friends. I don't know what else I can do about it at this point. I might try to reduce uh, quality of the stream next time around. Do some more testing and stuff. I do have it, uh, the, the microphone itself eliminated because I did a long sort of test record sec uh, session uh, just locally on the computer and everything sounded crystal clear. So I think it's all about YouTube. I might do some testing on Twitch too. Mind what or who you practice this on. If Twitch handles the, the crackling better, if it's a YouTube thing, then, uh... And steel are well and good, but then that might be an easy fix. I tend to prefer YouTube for a couple reasons. Um, namely because the big one is that I can choose not to show ads on my YouTube channel. Uh, Twitch is a little more heavy-handed about, you know, you're playing an ad at this point, but I think that doesn't really take into account until, um until you, your channel gets to a certain size. And then they kind of just decide when to, to play ads on your on your live stream. And that's kind of crappy. Uh, at least with YouTube, I can ensure that, that nobody has to see any ads that they don't want to see. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ramaran. All right, so what are we going to do here? What do we have available? Let's start with the gloves and see what we can do. We don't have Fortify Unarmed. You know what? Maybe we need to head down to Riften at some point and get the, uh, the Geon the Fist gloves to get that enchantment. So let's, let's hold off on the gloves, see what we can do with the hood, though. Take 5% less damage from attacks when your health falls below 25%. Might be useful. We spend very little time with our health below 25%, though. And if we do, then we're really in trouble, and I don't think the 5% damage reduction is going to help us all that much, so maybe not there. An alchemy boost could be nice, but we really don't use alchemy that much. We don't use potions all that much. And I don't know if I want to start using potions that much. Alteration. Usually if we're going to cast an alteration spell, we do it through Okado's Recital. Not so much um, not so much casting them manually. Maybe that'll change at some point, but for right now it doesn't, doesn't seem worth it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Loki, yeah, I think the death alternative mod that I'm running all, already cheats you out of out of stuff. Conjuration, maybe, uh, but again, we don't really use conjuration that much. Um, we kind of do summon the uh, the dire uh, spirit wolf at points. Uh, Fortify destruction, we could use that. Spells and enchantments cost eight percent less for sure. If we're doing destruction spells, it's usually a manual cast, so that would help a lot. Anti-Asher. <laughs> um, illusion, we don't really use. Um, I've been trying to use the Calm spells a little more on, on wildlife so we don't have to kill them when they're aggressive. But we don't really need a cost reduction on that. What we do need is, is an amplification. And a duration boost on that would be great. 
Fortify Magicka and Regen, yeah, maybe. Fortify Restoration, maybe. Take up to 10% less damage from enemy attacks the further their health falls below 50%. That might help with like large enemies like dragons and giants and, and bosses and stuff like that. But we really haven't had any trouble finishing people off. Ooh, increased experience. This would be a great one for the for the prayer beads. Only at 3% though. Still 3% is something. Philosopher's Stone, not so much. Yeah, I'm not really in love with anything there. Maybe the Fortify Destruction would be good. Um, I was going to say Amplify Destruction would be even better, but it looks like I already have that one, and it's not applicable to uh, a hood. So I really like the idea of adding enhanced experience to the prayer beads, sort of um, as a way to enhance... Um, Meditation through use of these prayer beads. It's not really going to help us in terms of, of strength and everything, but right now Jagasta doesn't really need that much help in terms of strength. But as a, as a roleplay narrative uh, character-centric consideration, I think that that is the coolest one. We'll do it. Noise. All right, so we got our training taken care of. We have our enchanting taken care of. Uh, now we need to get some food, some rest, and maybe have a chat with our followers, see what's going through their head. We'll go hang out at the uh, at the inn. Man, Candle Hearth Hall. The Nords do not really have much love for anybody who's not a Nord. And now they have a Khajiit, a High Elf, and a Breton walking into their... Uh, walking into their town watering hole here. What I'm sure we'll get some looks. But we ain't here to cause no trouble. Welcome. Let me know if you want anything. I think I've got a clean mug around here. Somewhere. Oh, this one does not need a clean mug. Got some fresh baked bread? I will take some warm milk in a dirty glass. Yeah, Loki, I um, I used uh, the well, my dentist prescribed Percocet Are you joking? You just uh, for a root canal that I had. And I actually found that ibuprofen even worked better. The Percocet made me sleepy and kind of made my head a little swimmy. Didn't like it much. Um, but the, uh, the ibuprofen seemed to work well. I just had to really take an increased dose of it. But that will mess your stomach up too. So you just got to be careful. Do what your doctor says. Hey, Snarky's all right. I'm snarky all the time, even when I'm not in pain. How are we doing on mead here? Pretty low, and we only have the off-brand stuff. Let's see if she's got some good, some of the good stuff. We'll go haunting brew. We just finished off a batch of uh, black briar, so we'll go haunting brew this time around. We'll try to support the good guys, and we have a ton of food already, so I don't think we need to buy any more food. How are we doing on water though? Uh, we're good on water. We'll take her ingredients though. And we still need the Are you joking? You just rented a room from me. Enjoy. Alright, I guess our room is still good. Excuse me, Zora. Thank you. Alright, let's go hang out with our Wang out. And then we'll chill out with our drill out. And then when we're all rest up. We'll rock out with our... No, I'm not going to say it. Uh, okay, what was I going to do? Okay, let's get fed, libated, 
and then we'll have a chat with our with our dudes. <laughs> I was going for uh, for laughs, Loki, but I'll, I'll take your dot dot dots. By all the mead, huh? Spoken like a true Scotsman, William. Spoken like a true Scot. Uh, let's see. I guess we'll try some troll meat. A little stringy. But it fills you up. And it's also kind of heavy, so we're going to have to try to get through it. Maybe some garlic bread for some carbs. We need some fiber. Do we have any? Uh... Yeah, the mushrooms will work. And we're full. We'll do some apple pie for dessert. Uh, and we'll... we'll... Wet the whistle a little bit with some milk. Oh, and then we'll wash it down with some mead. So mead plus milk. Creamy. And I don't see that I was uh, sated. Okay, we're hydrated now. Okay. Zora, my friend, how's it going? So what now? Really? No pleasantries? You're just gonna say, what do you want? Um. So back at Brittleshin, uh, what sort of rescuer were you waiting for? Well, handsome, but not cute. Funny, but not mean. Tender, but not soft. Strong, but not violent. That is the worst case of chapped lips I have ever seen. <laughs> uh, sure. Keep going on and on. I want to get some more insight into uh, what makes Zora tick. I want a man who's aggressive, but not impatient. Creative, but not obsessed. And most of all, confident, but not arrogant. The best I ever knew was four of those things, but he failed the arrogance test. He didn't just cross the border between confidence and arrogance. <laughs> he rode through on a gilded carriage pulled by frenzied mammoths. Oh, you carry a large weapon for a girl your size? That sounds suggestive. But I think that Jagasta would actually be um, analyzing her fighting style and stuff. And I think that he would actually find it interesting that a small framed person such as this um, is making such good use of such a, a large heavy weapon. It's not just for show. Although the necromancers seem to think so. Nobody takes me seriously. But when my weapon of choice was an amulet of Mara, then the boys were quite certain of my intentions. Even if that was just for show. So I take it you do have a lot of experience with the, with the greatsword? It took some time to get a hang of it. My body did pay quite a price for my lessons. I have more scars than skin now, I'm afraid. Yet you'll find I'm a capable fighter, and if it's adventure you seek, my lord, I am but your humble servant. The fury to your Holger, the Edward to your Barenzaya, the house girl to your Jarl. Yeah, uh, I am a Khajiit and I don't know what any of that stuff means, but, um, thank you? I already have one of those what? Eh. You know, Zora, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, if you were interested in trying the whole marriage thing again, uh, try wearing the amulet. You might be surprised. So is my lord suggesting I become a jester? <laughs> I think the surprise will be all theirs and the laughter. Hmm. Well, sounds like your uh, self-confidence has taken quite a hit. Uh, along with your face. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so yeah, I am curious about the scars. What's the story there? Uh, the scars came from adventuring. Most of them are barely visible, thanks to the one. 
From a distance, it may appear to be a dash of paint, a girl's attempt to look menacing. Upon closer inspection, you'll see some mark of a burn. And uh, I'm guessing there is probably some kind of story behind that burn. When I was a flowering young maiden, I once had many suitors. Men would travel great distances to see the diamond of Riverwood. The diamond of Riverwood. Sister, on the other hand, had no suitors to speak of. She was far more talented than I, a mage worthy of studying at the College of Winterhold. What she was not, unfortunately, was pretty. And how did that affect your relationship? We'd fight often about the smallest of things. Although they were never really about who was supposed to wash the clothes or sweep the floor. It was always about her envy and my lack of compassion. Eventually, one argument got trapped. Hey, there's another monk in the chat. That almost looked like Lydia there off the side of the screen. I was like, what's she doing here? Um... Yes, uh, this one knows that uh, siblings fight. This is the nature of things. But burning you was a little excessive. No, I, I deserved it. Not the flames, but the slap. Make no mistake. Welcome aboard, Joe. Glad friend. you could drop in. Beauty tends to make monsters of us all. She didn't intend to burn me, of course. All of that anger, that rage, just manifested itself into fire. <sighs> I see. So it sounds like magic is strong in her. Well, you seem quite understanding of the whole ordeal there. Now, but not then. Oh no, I was sufficiently devastated. My beauty was all that I had. It defined me. But it was the ugliness that hurts the most. The way people, not just men, looked at me. Always with that cringe. They all do it. Even the polite ones can't help themselves. No matter how hard they try to disguise it. When you read, every word is met with a smile. When it's gone, the whole world is shrouded in darkness. I couldn't loathe my sister for what she did. Not now that I know her pain. Okay, well, I would say that uh, beauty is fleeting for everybody. It is never wise to let your beauty define who you are. Regardless of how old, how young, or how beautiful you are. Find something else to define yourself by. Yeah? Um, some wisdom from uh, your friendly Demorg. Let's see here. Uh, where's Rumarin? I can't see crap. What's on your mind? Where did he go? Uh, quit your belly aching. Oh, He's a need something? big ass some nice high elf. Makes for a with war paint, punch. and I can't find him. Maybe he's downstairs. Do want, oh, yep, there he is. Hanging out with the locals like a true troubadour. My invisible magic sword is yours. That also is suggestive. Oh, let's see. Well, you certainly seem to have a healthy sense of humor. Especially for a high elf. It helps that my parents were troubadours and we spent every day around performers of all walks of life. Jesters, actors, magicians and bards. A wellspring of speechcraft that you couldn't help but drink from. It was the jester whom I gravitated to. A Nord man named Otero. And how exactly did that relationship develop? Sounds like you two would be quite the odd couple. Otero was always better no, with children fine. than a Toreador? <laughs> Troubadour. Troubadour. You see, laughter was important to him. He said sure it was powerful enough to disarm oh. any foe. I see. Is it still too soon? And when did you become an adventurer then? 
The day I stopped wanting to be a jester. I was about ten years old. Otero had taken me aside one afternoon to practice his new act. It was a great routine. In fact, I was laughing so loud I attracted an audience, a group of bandits. And what did you do? Well, I was terrified. But Otero rose up looking fat and half drunk and warned the bandits to leave or die. The bandits started roaring with laughter. When Otero made another threat, some were reduced to tears. They never saw the blade slide out of his sleeve. I never saw Fat Man act so swift. And that's when I learned how disarming laughter really is. Okay, well, remind me never to laugh at any of your jokes, yeah? <laughs> Uh, kidding, kidding. Uh, this one gets the sense that, uh, you are not a threat to us, so... By all means, make us laugh. Um... So yeah, I think Jagasta is also, as he is analyzing, uh, Zora's fighting style, he would also, uh, have some thoughts on Rumarans as well. So let's ask him about these bound weapons. Well, for starters, traveling light makes it easy to flee. Not that I would advocate running from a fight. No, best to back away slowly until your friends intervene. <laughs> yeah, I tend to agree. Um, this sounds critical, and Jagasta is not usually critical, but I think that um, this is more analytical. Um, Jagasta being a martial artist and his martial arts being uh, a, a big part of his spirituality and his, his path to discover his spirituality through the Gautfang philosophy um, is that he would also study the, the fighting styles of others. So I think that this would be a, uh, uh, an in-character observation. You forgot impermanent, magic at raining, and the fact that they only come in one color. Still, you don't have to carry them. I don't know about you, but the idea of slogging from town to town with a weapon rack strapped to my back is not my idea of an adventure. Uh, and do you know any other magic besides conjuring weapons? Ever seen an elf juggle three axes while conjuring a fourth? Tie a cherry stem into a knot with their tongue? Now that's magic. <laughs> Now, if you mean spells and things, that, I'm afraid, requires more than being born with your ears pointed skyward. That requires, ugh, studying. Hmm. Well, you know, you have to study, you have to practice, you have to train if you want to be truly good at anything. Um, even being a jester, right? Okay, well, enough talk. Uh, this one is spent, and he needs to get some rest, I think. Uh, let's see. Do I still have the room that I rented? Refugees will take over this city. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Yeah, it expired, so... Yes. Let's go ahead and re-rent that. I know where the room is. I've stayed in it before. Okay, so now we're going to get some rest, and I think we'll uh, actually head to Helgen this time. <laughs> uh... And we'll see how our new guard recruits are doing, because I think we are done with our uh, recruiting trip for that. Um, okay, so I do want to meditate to Azura, and we're going to need uh, to do that at around 5 a.m., I think. So let's count that out. 9 p.m. right now. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That should be it. Are the inn? Hopefully that smell isn't coming from their kitchen. Okay, let's uh let's get some food. It's a little too early for some for some mead, but we'll drink some milk here. Uh, let's see, something easy to digest, uh, milk, some cream, and some bread, and maybe some cheese. There we go. Get hydrated. All set. 
We'll go make some yellow snow, maybe. Oh, man. Is that a mod? Can you install a mod that adds uh, relieving your bladder <laughs> to the game? And I'm not talking about, like, a golden shower kinky mod, either. I'm talking about, like, uh, immersive potties or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there are mods that add bathing to the game, so... Why not biological needs, yeah? Oh, I totally overcounted, didn't I? Okay, let's, um... It's got to be five, not six. There's one that adds outhouses. <laughs> yeah, there does seem to be a severe lack of toilets in Skyrim, doesn't there? 10, 11, 12, 13, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, I slept an extra hour than I should have because I started at 9 instead of 10. All right, let's do our worship to Azura. Oh, it's really dark out here. It's the way Azura likes it. There we go. And see, our favor with Azura is falling. Uh, now it was 45.6 and now it's 43.6. What if we dress every beggar in a mage room? That would make the poorer districts look so much more distinguished. <laughs> this guy is full of good ideas, isn't he? Uh, all right, let's eat. What did we have? We had the milk, the cream, the bread, and the cheese. We had some water too, and I think that should be enough to get us hydrated, but it doesn't seem to be. Yeah, we are well hydrated. Maybe I just missed the notification, or maybe it hasn't popped up yet. Um, okay, so now we're ready to go. Where are we going? I think we want to go back to Helgen. And I am debating right, right now whether to uh, just hop the carriage and head down to Whiterun and go through that well-traveled path or take it to Falkreath, which seems a little closer. I think Falkreath is the path less traveled. Or, you know, I could go down to Riften here and get the enchantment for uh, the unarmed damage in the Ratway there. And uh, take the long scenic route through all the aspen trees in the Rift uh, and then through this path here, this pass here into Helgen. I think maybe we'll do that. Why not, right? We'll take the scenic route. We're not in any hurry. The The guard recruits are probably training down there right now, or if they're not still on their way. Haster said there is, a, there is a mod that does that. Okay. There are buckets, that's true. And there's usually a potion of um, health or a potion of stamina. <laughs> Right nearby. I don't know. Uh, maybe the bandits of Skyrim are not getting enough fiber in their diet that they need to, to take a potion to, to help them get through their movements. I don't know how much farther I want to go down this train of thought. Need a ride? I can take you to any of the hold capitals. We're staring right at Rumarin's ass here. Looks like he's got some stains on his robes, too. Immersive. Gross, but immersive. 
Where do you want to go? Yeah, uh, Haster, I've heard that they built it after they left Morrowind. <laughs> Strudel. You always pick the best times, don't you? Uh, okay, I think we're going to Riften. Climbing back and we'll be off. You'd best hurry it up. You'll want to watch yourself in Riften. A lot of ways to get yourself in trouble in that town. Oh, it's so bright. Now it's not bright enough. Okay, there is that enchantment down in the Ratway that I wanted. Really don't want to join the Thieves Guild. But I do want that enchantment. Ooh, just got a whole bunch of rumble in my controller here. I think Riften gives uh, gives Jigas to the willies. That's what's going on there. What time is it? It's only 6 a.m. All right, tell you what. Uh, let's see what we can do solo here. Come on in. We got water. We're going to leave Rumarin and Zora here at the inn, and uh, we'll take uh, Jigasta. Oops, that's not what I meant to do. We'll take uh, Jigasta on a solo voyage to the Ratway here. Why don't you guys relax in the inn here for a while? I'll be back to, to get you when we move out. Still the thyroid. Uh, is that something that they can treat, Strudel? I, I think maybe they've been treating it, but hopefully they can adjust a adjust the medication or something and, and help him out a little bit. You never want to see any animal suffer, especially if they're a pet, right? Beautiful baubles and gleaming gemstones over here. Good, good. Buckets, willies, and toilets. <laughs> you know exactly what kind of stream this is, William. I never gave you any false pretenses about what kind of stream this was. <laughs> I, don't know, They'd skin us alive if they uh, I think we're going to be better suited like such a big baby. with uh, having access to block in this situation here. Let's take out the archer here that we're close to. And uh, hopefully we can get him out of the way for the the melee fight with the with the brute there. Okay, okay. Huh? Oh, swing and a miss. That's terrible. I thought I was closer than that. Sloppy, but that's all right. Ow! Come on. You're going to do what now? All right. So yeah, Jagasta doesn't rely on his friends, even though he does travel with them quite a bit. Fortify light armor we might be able to make use of. Whoa, we pounced. I forgot about that. It works 100% when I don't expect it to, and then when I do expect it to work, it only works part of the time. That hanging moss is bothering me there. The yellow stream by Ipre Freely? I like it. Well done, Strudel. Well done. Okay. Back to Fire Blast here. Yeah. 
Let's see. We got uh, Knarthy's spirit aiding us here a little bit, which is fine. Oops, I just killed off my own spirit friend there. <laughs> Was it something I said as I'm beating his face in? Oh, that makes me laugh. Oh, nice. So we get the uh, unarmed boost there and recuperation, which is stamina regeneration. Great. Now I just gotta ha I just gotta find an enchanting table. May as well clear out the rest of the ratway though before I head back out and find uh, ooh traps. Find an enchanting station to learn that stuff from. Uh, and I'm also going to need to refill Azura Star with another Grand Soul gen or another Grand Soul at some point. So we'll have to find a a mammoth or a high ranking Draugr or something to do that with. Oops! Oops! oops. Oh, that was close. Okay. Big ol' ramrod almost parted our ass fur there. That thing would have been a little too buku for Jagasta. <laughs> okay, back to the block stance. Ah, uh, he never had a chance. Low life, eh? I don't feel bad about it then. Pickpocket skill, that will help. I'll gladly take that. Don't need to grab the... The book, though. We don't have to carry that around with us. Okay, that'll get us back out. And we can unenchant the enchanted items that we got. But uh, I'm going to do a quick save here. I'm just curious. I've never actually been to the Ragged Flagon outside of the Thieves Guild quest. I don't think they're hostile, but they're definitely not friendly. Ah, oh, this place is a dump. Yes. Oh. What can I do for you? Service isn't bad, though. Uh, hello. Huh? <laughs> Conversation isn't great. Yeah, Chigasta is not uh, <laughs> a pickup artist, that's for sure. Yeah, these characters look a little shady. You'd better have coin to pay for your drinks. There's no handouts here. Take a look. Let's see, just the generic mead. Blah. And we don't need any actual food. Until next time. We're stocked up on food. Yeah, this doesn't seem like Jagasta's kind of place. I would say we're going to hightail it out of here, but I think we will uh, settle for uh, a side-to-side flip-flopping tail out of here. A lazy wobbly tail as we run out. I thought if maybe there's like a, an animation mod or something that, that makes the tail actually go up when you sprint, but then I, I just realized we're going to be staring at cat butt the entire time. That may not be a great idea, so I'm just going to go... Oh, I hear a, a dragon. And selling fine jewelry here. Uh, I think we'll just make do with the, the floppy side-to-side -side tail action here while we run. <laughs> Veckle the man, yeah. There's the man. Come on in. We got warm Who the man? Warm he the man. Alright, guys. You ready to hit the road? Adventure awaits. 
The rift is beautiful this time of year, I hear. Actually, with my current mod load order uh, and all the different graphics replacements and stuff, the rift is probably my favorite place. And the rift at 7 o'clock in the morning is probably quite nice. I would think. Too much fog for your taste? Well, the fog is part of the weather mod, uh, Obsidian. And it looks like... Oh, well, there is some mod over there, but in my opinion, that fog looks quite nice. Fog out in the distance next to the mountains. Yeah, watch out for the bears for sure. In fact, let's get our hypnotize ready, see if we can calm some of these guys. If not, we're just going to have to fight them, but... Gigasto would rather not fight animals that are innocent in every way other than, you know, just being a little too territorial. So far, more foxes than bears. I wonder what it smells like. Probably cheese. Hmm. Probably. What does fear smell like? Maybe that weird, uh, cheesy dumpster smell that you get wafts of in, like, uh, heavily commercialized areas. Oh, jeez. Spider spooge. More spider spooge. It burns! God, these spiders are like, uh... Oh my god! Alright. The freaking Bill Clinton of spiders. No, oh, he's too powerful. For the calm spells, so we just gotta fight. At least the spider seems calm. All right, we'll leave the spider be unless he goes hostile on us again. Oh, we're traveling, so we need our walking stick, too. There we go. Okay, now what are we fighting? Bueller. Bueller. All right, nothing, I guess. Yeah, you did try to warn me, Aster, about the about the spiders. You didn't warn me that they were going to spew their goo at me though. Oh, what's going on over here? We got to help out. Okay, sorry, we'll be right... Oh, all right. Jeez, too many people to help. Help. <coughs> help me. It's another Khajiit. We gotta be able to trust her, right? My thanks, friend. Khajiit has lost everything. Talk Not a little so faster, please. thankful that you have found her alive. Okay, great. I got some other folks to help out here. All right, William, have a good rest of your evening uh, if you don't pop back up. I don't know if I'll still be going in an hour or so, but if I am, you are always welcome back. Halt! You have no business here, outsider. Leave at once. Jeez, that's uh, quite the attitude for someone who just saved your bacon, I think, right? Don't need the scales. I'll take the toes. 
will provide for us. We cannot carry on this way. You know we are doomed if we do not do something. Yamars charged me with keeping outsiders away from Largishburg. Would you have me disobey him? You were charged with keeping us inside the walls. Have faith, Uger. I only wish the best for our tribe. Fine. It's your neck. Uh, Jagasta is bloodkin from his time in this orcish stronghold over here. More Kazgur, he was, uh, he became quite fond of the orcs there, and the orcs became quite fond of him there. Mostly due to his, uh, hand-to-hand -hand so combat ability. Harsh words. She's merely doing as she's been told. Um, let's see, this one... Uh, Jigasta doesn't want to overstay his welcome, so we're going to be a little bit hesitant about um, poking his nose in places where people don't want it. No, don't. Uh, means two things. Sorry. Please. Our tribe suffers, and we need help. Our chief Yamars was once a strong and proud warrior. Now he is stricken, cursed. He is weak, and so our tribe is weak. The giants sense this and intrude on our territory. Now they assault our very home. Yamars refuses help, but I sense that you may be just what we need. Hmm. Okay, well, if the rest of you are okay with it, then uh, I'll be glad to help. What can I do? Yamars has demanded we stay inside the walls. We cannot leave. I must petition Malakath for relief. This curse must be lifted. But I cannot travel to Malakath's shrine. The ritual must be done here, and I do not have the materials I need. I beg of you, can you bring me troll fat and a daedra heart? I have no wish to depend on a stranger, but I have no choice. Okay, Haster, Lore Master, I need your help. How does uh, how do the Khajiit see uh, Malakath? Is he a uh, an entity in their pantheon, in their religion? that you know of? What can you tell me about this Malakath? You do not know of Malakath? He is the keeper of oaths, the master of curses. He is quick to anger and slow to forgive. One who wrongs Malakath is one who will endure great torment in return. He demands loyalty and strength from his orcs. We have tried to please him, but he is now angry with us, and so we suffer. Okay. Sounds like uh, some strange practices to me, but whatever floats your boat there, lady. Oh, do I actually have all the things that Excellent. Now. I guess I've already had everything that she needed. All right. Shortcut. Be present for the ritual. What was it that we needed? I wonder. Bring troll fat and a dater heart. We had both of those? I guess maybe we did. Um, okay. I must focus now. This ritual is very important. You must help us appease Malakath. Strange route there, Magellan. What the hell is she doing? Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> Try save and reload, see if we can reset some scripts here. We'll, uh, we'll do some fast traveling here, too, see if we can reload the area. Gotta love Skyrim and its scripting system.
There we go. Oh, no, that is not Atub, that is one of the orcish wenches. Our tribe has survived this long without you interfering. We'll be fine. That's not what, uh, what's-her-name was saying. All right, let's go in there and see. It is time, Mars. You bring an outsider here, and now insist I call on Malakath for help when he has clearly forsaken me. You try my patience, Atub. Doing nothing will not grant our tribe relief from this curse. We must try. Uh, uh, let's get this over with. Okay. It looks like uh, she just went in to find the chief who was not stationed outside in his little his little chair. Now we begin the ritual. Great Malakath, we beseech you, aid us in our time of need. Why are we bothering with this? You pathetic weakling! <laughs> hey! Malakath has oh, he was talking to him. He speaks to us. You dare summon me, Yamars? What? What is this? You don't deserve to call yourself an orc. You're weak, you're small, and you're an embarrassment. You let giants, giants, overrun my shrine. <laughs> oh, hi, Bring Mal. me their leader's club as an offering, and I might release you from this curse. Am I not giving you enough attention, Zora? Malakath has spoken, Yamars. Your path is clear. Very well. You, outsider, come here. I want to work. Oh, no, we will not accept Malakath at this time. This is all your fault, you know. I'm stuck fighting a giant now, thanks to you. So you're going to help me. You're going with me, and you're going to make sure I don't have any trouble reaching that giant. Don't worry. I'll make it worth your while. Does he have two different colored eyes? It looks like one of them's like either white or like gray and the other one's red. Interesting. Get a little closer look. Oh, yeah, he's just got the white eye, probably from a scar or whatever. Uh, okay. What do you want me to do? This giant. It's not the only thing in Fallowstone Cave. Getting to it isn't going to be easy. You're going to clear a path to the giant so I can conserve my strength. I'll make sure you're paid for it. So you meet me at Fallowstone Cave, and I'll get this over with. I can have my tribe back, and you can... You can leave us alone. Alright, you sound like a, a real wuss of an orc. But I'll help you out if you need help. Why not? This one fights giants all the time. They're not a big deal. He runs like a numpty. Look at him. I guess maybe it's the armor that's that's keeping him from moving his head. <laughs> I don't know. I guess Jagasta doesn't run much differently. There are different... Uh, animation mods that I could install that, that change the, the running animation, but I've not really find, found one that I, that I really like, uh, at least for the male models anyway. Actually, for the female models as well, I, the female models running animations just always like chest out <laughs> for reasons, I guess. More spiders? Oh, this must be... The oh, wow. Okay, maybe you're not that much of a wuss. That was a one-hitter one, one -hitter quitter. 
had some nice bounce to it too. That must have been that spider that we calmed earlier, I'm guessing. Some pretty fall colors here. I approve. Where's he going? He's taking a strange route to this cave over here. This is where we're trying to go. I don't know why he's going this way. Panic Monked is back. The Panic Monked. <laughs> the Panicked Monk is back, and he's uh, gonna mix up a, a cure for Caladran. That's good. Very nice of him. Oh my god, what are you doing, buddy? one less thing to worry about. Just some random Breton? Yes. Alright, whatever. Alright, where's Yamars? Where's that silly orc? He wasn't even entering the fray. Alright, where the hell did that bozo go? Okay, we'll chill here for a second and see if he... Is that Rumarin or is that Yamars? That is Rumarin. I was going to accompany him to the cave, but... If he took off while we were fighting, then... I'm not going to bother. Oh, yeah, okay. He went ahead. We'll go ahead and cut through Rift in just in case uh, it helps us catch up to you, Mars. Yeah. Oh, we just got the heebie the heebie jeebies again. My controller was just rumbling as soon as I entered Riften every time. It's weird. Oh, there's your Mars. Yeah, your Mars is too important to deal with uh with random Bretons. Or too much of a wuss. One of those. You know, it's funny because the character is supposed to be like portrayed as this like weakling wussy orc. But uh, technically, in game, he's quite strong. In fact, I think if you're like a, a necromancer, a reanimated chief Yamars is like one of the, the strongest... Uh, named followers in terms of, you know, just like melee tanks that you can have. Strange dichotomy there. Interesting. Probably just an oversight by the engineers. Echo Deep Mine. It's not where we're headed. I do hear a bear. Keep your distance, bear. Alright, is he coming after us or the... Alright. 
They need our help more than Yamars does. Okay, everybody all right? Good, looks like they're fine. Um, let's see. Ooh, destruction. Uh, I have just realized that uh, I have not actually leveled up Fire Blast since, uh, since it got stronger there. So let's head into Forgotten Magic and, and see what we can do. I think last time I took the perk that, uh, yeah, Searing Pain that added damage over time, the Ignite thing, and I think that there was another perk that, uh, that played off of that. This plays off of Combustion. I think that I didn't like Combustion because it consumed the Ignite effect. Decreases fire resistance. Yeah, I think I would rather have the, the damage over time effect. But I thought there was something else here. Searing Pain and Ignite Damage. Okay, so I already took both of those. Okay, good. So what else do we have here? Loki needs coffee. And the Panicked Monk is desperately searching for alchemical reagents that cure disease for Caladran. That's uh, very nice of you. Okay, what do we got here? Fire Starter. A chance to cast Fire Blast twice at no cost. Okay, I really liked that one, I remember. So we'll keep that one in mind heavily. Increases Fire Blast damage by 50%, but also increases mana, mana cost. I kind of like the ability to just spam this and throw it out aggressively, so I don't really want to increase its cost any, even if, it, uh, even if that damage increase by 50% is awesome. I'll keep it in mind. But right now, a 25% mana cost increase means that I can only cast it 75% of the time. Or at a 75% of the rate that I was casting them before, which I don't really like. 50% is quite a bit, though. Chance to knock back. I don't think I really want people being knocked back from Jagasta because he is primarily a melee fighter and he needs to be in close. Chance to decrease fire blast mana cost by 70% for 8 seconds. That's kind of nice. That might actually offset the, uh, the pyromaniac thing here. So we'll keep that in mind as well. After spending this point, we'll have two left. So I think spending it on hot streak and pyromaniac makes sense for the last two, maybe. Don't want to consume the Ignite effect. And if we're spamming Fire Blast, we're probably not going to have a whole lot of mana in the tank, so this is this is going to be less useful. Um, yeah, I like this one. A chance to cast Fire Blast twice at no cost is effectively a chance to double our damage there every time we throw that out. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. And I think um, the plan is for the next two points that we get, the next two talent points that we earn here, I think we're going to go with Pyromaniac and Hot Streak. They're offsetting, and it um, may actually boost our damage by 50%, which I think is great. Okay. Let's quick save. Oh, we got some... Canis Root here too, which is not rare, but hard to find in terms of just being able to see it. Oh, there's another spider. Let's blast him. Oh, he spooched us again. Was Zora pantsless there for a second? No pants. It's a strange little jump. Okay, guys, Loki's back. 
actually called pyromania yeah the talent it's uh it's from forgotten magic and the the talent that you can choose to spend your point on is actually called pyromaniac <laughs> gotta get him uh, give him credit uh on naming the the effects there quite creative Forgotten Magic is one of my favorite spell mods to add to your game, so highly recommended there. Cave up ahead. Tread carefully. If there's a chance this will save me, then I'm taking it. I'll lead the way, but you'd better back me up. Let's get this over with. All right, all right. I'm here. And Calic Dran got tea. Um, yeah, I almost went with tea this morning, but it was a little warmer here today than we expected. Ooh, that's bright. What is going on there? Well, oh, the night vision is even brighter. We have a lot of ambient light. Interesting. Uh, yeah, so I was gonna have tea with my ego waffles this morning, but it was a little warmer than I expected, and, uh, you know, drinking hot tea during a warm day is not always the best thing. Zora thinks this is a pretty sight, and I must agree. It's quite nice. We're having some weird lighting issues here, though. Sometimes the ambient lighting kicks on, and sometimes it, uh, it looks fine. Hope I don't have uh, any actual technical issues with the game going through this area, but so far so good. I would knock on wood to not jinx that statement, but uh, I don't want to rile up my dog. Are you going to pick a fight with the giant, or are you going to let him be? It's alright, big fella. We're not trying to fight you. Although I do need a soul for, for Azura Star. <laughs> Maybe we'll pick off one of these. Oh no, we can, we can use the giant fight at the end of this. Um, let's just make sure we have Soul Cloak ready to go. And then of course, as soon as I switch off from Fire Blast, we get some aggressive bears here. We'll switch back. And I know giants are only a greater gem, but um, that's alright. That's good enough for me and Jagasta. As you can see, he's strong enough without super strong enchantments that we don't need anything super powerful. It's more just a roleplay mechanic at this point, I think. We'll take the alchemy ingredients there. You just want to yank the tooth out? Yeah, I've been there. Does the dentist want to extract it, Loki, or are they going to try to save it? Oh my gosh, now it's way too dark. What time is it anyway? It's 11.30 in the morning. And it is so dark in this area. It was too light in the cave, and now it's too dark out here in the grotto. I do have Soul Cloak. No, I don't. Okay, there we go. Some really weird lighting issues going on in this area. Be careful. All right. I'll go kill this giant. Unless, of course, you'd like to make some extra gold. Uh, no, uh, I'm not motivated by gold, and I'm pretty sure that would piss off Malakath even more so than he was already pissed off at you, so I think you better at least try to do it. I'm here to back you up if you need. Fine, then wait here. This should only take a second. Uh, okay, so do they have the extraction scheduled at least, Loki? God, I really cannot see anything, even with Night Eye active and the ENB disabled. 
I wonder if this is an ELE or relight relighting Skyrim issue. I'm running old versions of both of them. Probably out of date. Oh, yep. Yamars is gone. Whoa, Yamars has just landed after being launched in the air. Well, the giants took care of him, and you took care of Oh, that makes sense, yeah. So you have to let the COVID run its course and then Now, take Shagro's hammer back to Largishburg, and we'll see about whipping the rest of them into shape. They make it dark regardless, but I think, uh, Magus, there's there's something else going on here because, like, the fire pit itself, there's something really wrong going on here. The lighting just is not working properly. Well, I don't know. With the E and B on, it doesn't look terrible. It's just really overly dark. All hail Malakath! Yeah. We'll take the giant toes for the alchemy ingredients there and the powdered mammoth tusks, but uh, who is Shagrol? Shagrol sounds like a, a euphemism for uh, sexy time, doesn't it? We're going to have to take his hammer, though. It's, it seems like a unique thing. I feel like maybe there's uh, some kind of small side quest attached with retrieving the hammer. Or is that the hammer that we're actually taking from... That's going to turn into a uh, Volandrone? Oh yeah, Shagrol's hammer. Yeah, that that's part of the quest. Okay. I was a little confused there for a second. Alright, where's Yamaras? Did you have anything good on him? Nah, just a bunch of orcish stuff. Okay, let's check out the, the boss chest over there. Um, I'm using... Ah, I don't know, it's pretty much the standard uh, enhanced flames and embers and stuff, I think. Uh, but they're old. They're old, so this might be a bug that was fixed a while ago and I just never updated the mods to uh, to fix it. Whatever, we don't have to spend much time in here. But yeah, that does make sense that it can get a little messed up between uh, being confused whether or not it's an internal or external location. Yeah, Bloated Man's Grotto being another one, yeah. Um, but at least as far as I've experienced in my game with this same load order, uh, I don't have the same lighting issues in that location as I do in this one. Okay, what's the quickest way back? I think we came in that way. Where does this go? Okay, yeah, this is the exit, because we can't get back up to the entrance without taking this way. Alright, alright, we're good. I know where we are. I know where we're going. Yeah, and as you can see, there's a bunch of weird lighting stuff. It, sometimes the ambient light kicks on and is, is nice and bright, and then other times it kicks off and it looks normal again. And there's some weird, like, lighting artifact on the screen now there, too. Like, right to the left and above Jagasta's head. It seems to be attached to the camera. Unless that's just weird, a weird monitor anomaly, and my monitor's glitching out on me, which could be a possibility. <laughs> but now it seems like it's gone. Alright, I'll have to keep an eye on that. 
How many mods am I using? Uh, I'm using, I want to say like 450 roundabouts. Yeah, Skyrim definitely is known for lighting glitches, um, and especially when you have too many light sources in one area. I know there's a mod to fix that as well. I'm not running that one, as it's newer than my load order. Um, but yeah, a lot of that flickering of the lights on and off comes from just having too many visible light sources on the screen at once. The ENB is active. When I switch on Night Eye, it turns the ENB off so that the ENB doesn't override the Night Eye effect. Um, in fact, I'm going to go into the console here and hit my... This is what it looks like without the ENB active. It's a little more... Well, it's a lot more washed out. And this is with the ENB. It adds uh, ambient occlusion, some more shadows, and uh, just has a darker filter on it. Looks much nicer with the ENB active. In my opinion. Where's that soldier go? That might be like a, an Imperial courier or something, or just a part of a, a smaller contingent trying to catch up with his dudes. Okay, going left. The ENB that I am running is NVT, Natural View Tamriel. It's one of the heavier ones. Um, I would say it's really similar to the Rudy ENBs, which people really love a lot. But yeah, if you are, I mean, I'm running a 3080, a GT, or I'm sorry, an RTX 3080 top of the line card. Oh, okay. They're fighting each other. We'll stay out of that conflict. Uh, uh, the 3090 notwithstanding. Um, and I still get, as you can see, my frame rate up in the left corner is, is uh, dipping down to mid 40s. Uh, even with the top of the line graphics card. Um, so the ENB is quite heavy. Uh, if you have a lesser graphics card, it probably won't handle it quite as well. I don't actually want to go through Riften again. We'll go around. I don't know why. I just don't feel like going through the city again, you know? Yeah, from what I've seen, Rudy and NVT are, are quite similar. There are going to be subtle differences there, but um, as far as ENBs go and lighting and different visual effects and filters and stuff, my eye is not quite as trained to notice the subtle differences. Um, but definitely uh, NVT, Rudy are more heavy ENBs, and you can tell that with more aggressive like uh, ambient occlusion, um, richer uh, contrast and shadows, darker shadows and things like that. Just a more aggressive, darker filter over everything. Whereas you choose like a lighter weight ENB, like uh, PRT, photo realistic Tamriel, it uh, doesn't quite do as much for the image quality. And not all of that uh, uh, performance drop is from, actually, I don't think any of it is from. Uh, See, I'm running at about 40 frames per second right now, but my GPU is running at 68% usage, and that's with using Shadowplay to stream to YouTube uh, and using RTX broadcast to uh, filter out the, the noise coming through my microphone and all of that. Even though there are there is crackling, I think that's more of a YouTube thing than anything going on with my system. Rudy's actually lighter. Interesting, because it has a similar look, in my opinion, to uh, NVT, which is heavier uh, than it does to something like PRT, which is usually a little more washed out, but less of an impact on performance. Yeah, but uh, like I said, I, I I feel like the performance dips that I'm getting now, like say right now I'm running at, uh, let's see, 45 to 48 frames per second. I disable um, the ENB and I'm getting around 50 to 52. So um, 
about two frames per second is what the the ENB is costing me. And, and like I said, I'm I'm barely running seventy percent GPU usage right now. So, uh, and CPU usage is uh, barely at sixty percent. So this is not uh, the performance tips that I'm getting. Is is all Skyrim right now? It's just the dated engine that they're running for this older game. And it has nothing to do with me running limited resources. Yeah, but uh, I think the ambient occlusion is what I like most about this this ENB. <laughs> so to me, the five to ten FPS is is worth it to get the ambient occlusion. And really, I only get the frame dips in in heavy uh, open world spaces like this. God, that wolf didn't stand a chance. Um, in most areas, I, I get close to a locked 60 frames per second. And I'm running a G-Sync, or actually FreeSync monitor these days that is G-Sync compatible. Oh, jeez. Well, they got it taken care of. No problemo. Uh, Magus has 771 mods now, just under 60 with, with tweaks. Oh, uh, just under 60 FPS. Nice. Yeah, no, uh, the performance that I'm seeing now is actually quite rare. For the most part, I'm around 60 as well. Generally, I would la I would I would rather favor a sixty a solid sixty frames per second than uh, than running higher fidelity visuals uh, at the cost of you know running in in the forties. But with uh, the G Sync monitor that I'm running right now, it keeps input latency low and keeps the the image on the screen fairly smooth, uh, even at, at variable frame rates. So. For games like Skyrim, open world stuff like this, if it does dip below 60 now and then, I'm okay with it. Now, if you're running a monitor that isn't G-Sync or FreeSync that has the variable rate refresh on it, um, dipping below, even slightly below 60 will cause your refresh rate to go all the way down to like 40 or 45. And then if you dip below that, it will go all the way down to 30 which is quite the jump, and uh, you won't have as smooth a gameplay with a monitor like that. It becomes less playable. But right now, this is, this is perfectly playable for me. I would like it at a smooth 60 all the time, but I'm okay with the way things look right now, and the way things play. Uh, let's see, you disabled VSync, turned on AO, and unlocked FPS using Fireman's new TNT EMB for Obsidian. Yeah, your game looks great. I have seen it. Um, you can have as many as your system can handle. 254 plugins is the max. But you can ESL a lot of mods that aren't and don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, looks like you were answering a question by PC Gamer there. The maximum amount of mods you can install. Yeah. Uh, no limit to mods. Uh, there is a hard limit to... Um, plugins, ESPs slash ESMs that you're running. If your mod happens to include those. So that's a hard limit. I thought it was 255 though, not 254. But yeah, if uh, you can flag your, your ESPs, you can resave them as ESLs. And then they don't count. Toward your uh, toward your total plug-in count. You almost need like a full engineering degree in Skyrim modding to get to get the most out of this game. It get, it goes really deep. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, that's a good general rule of thumb there, Magus. I mean, I think that it counts the vanilla um, plugins too, and the the masters. But I think MO2 counts those for you anyway. All right, what's going on here? One thing that's nice about this uh, Fire Blast spell, added by Forgotten Magic, is that uh, it's a hit scan. It's not a projectile. It uh, there is no like travel time. As soon as you let the spell go, it it kicks in. You don't have to wait for the the bolt to travel through the air and run into the enemy. It's kind of nice to have that option or a spell that provides you with that option because a lot of spells are, are very slow flying through the air <clears throat> magus is running at 218 currently that's that's pretty low for 770 plus spells for sure are you bashing magus or are you just uh flagging as esl oh i think i think you you are bashing to get the leveled list integration in right Iverstead goes this way. Iverstead and Helgen. Okay, we're headed. We are heading to Helgen, literally. <laughs> More bear fat and bear claws. Yes, please. I'll take them. I have played uh, Oblivion. I tried playing Morrowind. Um, but my Elder Scrolls experience started with Oblivion, so it, that downgrade in both gameplay and visuals, going back down to Morrowind, was just too much for me. I, I couldn't handle it. Um, it's a great game, I'll give you that. It, it's probably a better role-playing game in terms of uh, being a, a pure RPG outside of uh, Oblivion taking on a more action RPG approach and. Skyrim going even further with that. Oh my god. Baddies everywhere. Are now bandits? Alright. Alright. Take some of this. Take some of that. I got more. Anybody want seconds? Oh yeah, she does. All sounding like Ripley when she's charging forward. Man, they're being cagey. Hard to hit. Maybe with a better uh, frame rate, I would have been able to to hit her a little better with this thing. Oh, got me. I was trying to juke and jive. Okay. Oh, he's still aggressive. Where is he going? What does he see? More bandits? Cheese and rice. Oh, sick burn, Rumarin. You need to do better than that. Are we good now? Okay, good. Let's see if we got any more forgotten magic tomes on these dudes and ladies. Dudes and dudettes. Eh, nothing, nothing. A bandit once told me I picked a bad time to get lost. Which got me thinking, is there ever a good time to get lost? Hmm. I suppose if we were on our way to a Nord ruin and ended up at the tavern, then it'd be a good time. But only then. Yeah, I was just going to say, it probably depends on where you're getting lost. And who you're getting lost with. Oh man, only three lockpicks. After all these bandits... I only have three lockpicks on my person. Or on my cat, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. This cat's a person, too. 
Yeah, um, I do have uh, I, I do have all of the Elder Scrolls games through Steam. I bought the Legendary Edition uh, from a brick and mortar store, which uh, came with keys for all the different games, all of the Elder Scrolls games. Uh, and yeah, I did try Morrowind. Couldn't get it to stick, uh, but I did play the hell out of Oblivion. I played that game a lot. But even now, it's it's hard to go back to Oblivion for me after playing Skyrim for so long. Just the enhancements to gameplay alone. I do like the writing and the, the quests, the way the quests are written better in Oblivion. I thought they were much more imaginative. They had a lot more charm. Where the hell... Do I have instincts? I'm missing some bandits here. Here we go. Oh, there's a lockpick that I could use. And the wolf stuff. All right, getting ever closer to Helgen. Quick save. Oblivion was my first Elder Scrolls game. I like Morrowind, but hate reading the dialogue since there's no voice acting. Eh, yeah, that's that's another part, right? The voice acting can add a lot to it. Another battle, another victory for my hero and his faithful child. As long as you're not voicing the uh, the player character, because <laughs> that makes it hard to uh, to roleplay as that character. I think that was a misstep that they took in Fallout Four. Honestly, I mean, I don't. I enjoyed the voice acting the first few times through Fallout Four. I thought it was a nice addition, but I think that they should have built in the option uh, I think they should have built in the option to have a silent protagonist. There are mods that fix it, obviously. And that's necessary for a lot of uh, players who stream roleplay of that game. But yeah, it would have been nice to have the option right out of the box. Yeah, I still want to go through Bevelex's mod list. It looks beautiful uh, with that, uh, using that guide. Absolutely beautiful. It still plays exactly like Oblivion, <laughs> which might be the issue. Uh, for me, but um, because it, it's still, the, in terms of gameplay, it's still going to be quite the downgrade from Skyrim, regardless of what mods you have installed. Uh, and that might be the issue for me. But uh, I would still like to go through the guide anyway and, and just learn about Oblivion modding. Oh, wait a second. Alchemical Studies. This can come in handy. I do have, um, this is like a, oh, it's a, it's a compendium of different effects for most, not all, but most of the ingredients you're going to, you're going to find. And, uh, I actually have a, a CACO patch running for it too. So that could be very, very helpful for any kind of alchemical uh, focused character. Jagasta here doesn't really focus on alchemy, but uh, he does like to tinker with alchemical ingredients and trying to come up with poultices and, and cures and things like that. Being a monk of the gout fang persuasion, he likes to try to use the land for whatever he can. Caladran loves Morrowind. Yeah, I 
I don't blame you at all. There's a lot of charm in that game. And honestly, I think if I had started with Morrowind as my first Elder Scrolls game, I would uh, I would have a much better opinion of it on all levels. Oh, there's a werewolf. Yikes. All right, this might be tough. You guys be careful, okay? He doesn't seem aggressive, though. I don't know if I trust him. Oh, okay, this is world, uh, I'm sorry, immersive world encounters, and I think that there's a bug going on with this here. It skipped a transition and went right to him being a werewolf. Yeah, all right. Oh, this werewolf seems really strong. Not stronger than my feet of fury, though. Werewolf Beastmaster. <laughs> Darnair hisses at the werewolf. Hiss. I guess Jagasta would be hissing too. Hissing, hissing. The guide is on Wabajack as well. Oh, nice. The Bevelex mod, so you can actually use Wabajack for Oblivion too. That's awesome. I would probably do it manually as well. And I know you want to use Rybash as, as your mod manager for that. MO2 does not work so well with the, with the older Skyrim games. Or older uh, Elder Scrolls games. Let's see. I don't think Jagasta is going to be going as far as taking blood from the werewolf. But we will take some ingredients. If there's something healing related in there, we'll take it. Yeah, I've never actually used Rybash for anything other than creating bashed patches. Which has always been a mainstay in all of my load orders. Um, but I guess now with being able to flag things as ESL and a lot of the weapons or the mods that add to the leveled lists, they do that uh, via scripting now. So you don't have to worry about bashing too much, but you know. I still do it anyway because it's what I know. Oh, you literally did hiss, Loki? <laughs> nice. I am glad you spelled it out. Yes, you was a daily prince. I'm glad you're getting into it. And you're not hissing just as a symptom of, of the COVID, right? <laughs> Um, let's see. Okay. We've already cleared Orphan Rock. I was trying to remember if we did the, uh, uh, the Danica's pat, uh, Danica's quest. And yeah, we did for sure. Because I remember using her as a trainer. Almost there. We're getting so close. And we're going to see how these recruits are doing. Yeah, you just do it uh, on instinct now, I guess, huh? It's an involuntary reaction that you hiss at dogs. Okay, here we are. Back at Helgen. Ugh, I don't... Why did they lock us out? Pain in my ass. All right, let's see if we can go around to the front gate. Yes, is it anyone he doesn't like? Okay. Why are they locking us out? All right. There's not an easy way around to the other gate, so I'm just going to have to unlock it. 
Hey, there's Sienna. How you doing, friend? What you did in that prison when we got coursed? Let's just say I was impressed. Did I do something inappropriate in the prison? Oh, you mean fighting? Yeah, fighting, right? Sienna said you fought like a true warrior in that. Yes, I fought in the prison. That's right. I could have been there. Uh, yeah, it could be Loki. Glad there aren't any actual bandits in here, though. Ah, look at all these ragtag guard recruits. You look like a bunch of worrisome, loathsome idiots. We're gonna have to get you all back into shape. Uh, okay. Who do I need to talk to? Return to course. It looks like he's actually in the keep here. Yeah. Well, they're really deep down in there, aren't they? <laughs> I'll make a man out of you. Okay, Marcus Janus is not... who I'm looking for. Or is it Janus? Janus or Janus? I think it's Janus. If it's Janus, then I'm going to call him Janus the Anus. I'm not going to be able to help it. And then we'll know why uh, he and Valerius are such good friends, right? If it is indeed Janus the Anus. Who is this? You don't look familiar. Hmm. Manara? Well, hello. Uh, yeah, hi. <laughs> I don't recognize her at all. Maybe she's like the alchemist or something that moves in to Helgen after you start restoring the place a little more. Jesus, where is Korst? He's way down here. Horst is a course, of course, of course. Wow, you are a hard man to find, you know that? What's up, bro? Can you absorb the soul of a dragon? Uh, I can't. But I'm flattered that you think that I can. Um, anyway, I found six new recruits to begin training. Janus the Anus had a big pain. Yeah, okay. Probably wise. I believe we okay. are all waiting in the courtyard for your return. But before we address them, I need to ask you something. Alright, what is it? Well, you saved my life from that stinking prison. And I value your opinion on their skills. I was wondering if you would be willing to help me with the evaluation of these new recruits. Okay, maybe I can help out with that. What do you need me to do? We've been getting reports of trouble from people all over Skyrim. Bandits, vampires, Draugr, and whatnot. If you could Bandits, vampires, and Draugr, oh my. Take a recruit with you each time. We can evaluate their skills more quickly. Alright, uh, I can do that. I've been evaluating skills uh, from my from the very first moment I spent in Skyrim. So yeah, let's do that. It's one of my specialties. Great. I hoped you would help. Please, follow me to address the recruits. See me after, and we'll get started on the evaluations. Sure thing. Let's go all the way back up here and evaluate these recruits. Jeez, it's going to take you a while to get there. Oh, you're going the other way around? Is he coming back up through this way, or is he going out the back end uh, exit? Okay. All right, that's good, at least. We can follow him. Uh, 
Ah, okay. So you're still uh, comparing all my followers to different Assassin's Creed uh, protagonists, huh? <laughs> it's got to be the hood. It's the hood. Went from looking like Altair to looking like Ezio. I mean, I do see the resemblance. I'm, I'm just poking fun at you. And I know you're a big Assassin's Creed fan, so... I can't blame you for that. I'm still playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I am enjoying, but man, it's big. It is quite the Odyssey, literally, man. So much to do. And the map itself is quite huge, too. Recruits! Front and center. Formal line right here. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you have an opinion opinion on Odyssey. A lizard, a catman, a puny nod, and a woman. <laughs> You're a pitiful lad, aren't you? Puny Nord and a woman. You gotta watch out for that woman. I saw some of her skills. You sound like a bunch of baby mud crabs. When I ask you a question, the first... It sounded like he said mud grabs. The like served. they're a bunch of mud grabbers. Now, which sir, sounds like absolutely disgusting. Sir, 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 sir. What happened to you, lizard? Did your mother have any eggs that hatched? <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Well, all of you are flabby and weak, but today we begin your training. You will patrol. Zora's going in and out of them, like eyeing them all up. I might just let you get a little sleep. How about you, Breton? What's your story? I want to become an adventurer, like you. But no one in my family ever did anything exciting. I aim to change that. Oh. <laughs> Seeking fame and fortune, eh? Well, you'll be adventuring soon enough with our friend here. Each one of you will be going into the field to look for strengths and weaknesses in your combat skills. It will not combat be skills. Easy. It will be hard. But maybe with proper training you might just become skilled enough to have a home here. Now then, you each have your assigned duties and training to resume. So get to work. Now, soldiers! Sir, 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 yes, sir. Take each one of the new guards for out for training. Okay, so this is another long quest that we're gonna be taking our time with, I think. New to report? You are doing a great job with these recruits. Give it up. No, thank you. I mean all I did was recruit them. Uh, I'm ready to begin evaluating them now. Uh, what do you recommend doing with them? Okay, let's see. This says that vampires have taken over an old ruin near the lake west of here and have been abducting travelers along the roads. Take one on dune with you and check it out. And no matter what you do, don't let them touch you. Yeah, so one on dune is the Argonian, right? Yeah, there he is. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I really need to get a good look at this guy. So I think I am going to leave Rumarin and uh, Zora here. Hang out with the rest of the recruits, uh, maybe help with the training a little bit. And that will help me focus on what this guy has to offer here. His form with the greatsword is pretty good. So far so good, but we need to see him in action. I mean, the dummies don't fight back, right? Got some moves, though. Uh, Mr. Wanon Dune, uh, listen, we have a special assignment for you. Uh, you're supposed to come with me. Uh, we're going to go fight some vampires, and we're going to see if you got what it takes to become a guard. Oh, what? 
Where are we going? I just said <laughs> we're gonna go kill some vampires. Sounds fun, right? One Andun hates filthy vampires. He does not want to be touched by one of them. One Andun shall follow. Yeah, I don't want to be touched by one either, but you know, I think I might have some potions of cure disease here that we can use. Yeah, I got a couple. Um, so we'll each take one when we get out of the cave, right? Alright, now where is this vampire at? Okay, North Shriekwind Bastion. We've already been through here though, haven't we? Okay, it's not too far away at least. Um, I think that there's a south entrance to this that I haven't discovered yet. So maybe we'll head back toward Falkreath here, which is to the right, it looks like. Um, okay, we're going to get started on the road with one on Dune here. All right, this is not a good start, one on Dune. All you had to do was follow me. And you can't even do that right. The hell did you go, you big goofball? Oh, there he is. Now where are you going? Okay, listen. If you can't even just follow behind me, then I don't know if this whole thing's going to work out. So you, soldier, need to get your act together. Pull it together. Come on. Show me what you got. All right. That's better. Yeah, stop your snickering. You're next. Okay. So now we're on the road back to Falkreath. Uh, and then from there, we'll head into um, Shriekwind Bastion here. Um, but we'll probably head to Falkreath first. Uh, it's getting a little late in the afternoon, so we'll probably rest up, gather our strength, uh, get fed and hydrated before we head into the vampire den there. Um, but we are, ooh, Jagasta looks filthy. All right, let's take a second to clean off the robes here. And the gloves look okay, but I'll go ahead and, there we go. William's back just as I was getting ready to close the stream out. <laughs> Yeah, watch out for Shadeling. Yeah, uh, he's not in my game yet, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, um, we are on the road to Falkreath. I think we'll pick that up next episode. Uh, I have been streaming now for, I don't know, a good three and a half hours. So uh, I need to I need to call it quits, take a break, uh, get some lunch. It's 1.50 here and I haven't eaten since breakfast, so... I need to get some food in my stomach, uh, maybe get some exercise and do some yard work. Um, but I'm going to call an end to the stream right here. But uh, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Uh, if you had a good time with uh, this Skyrim content, uh, please do check the description below. Uh, there are lots of links to lots of other people's uh, channels. There are live streams going on all the time. Mr. Magus80, who is in the chat room now, has been back to streaming fairly regularly. Um, so check his channel out. Uh, William McNee also has a long-standing um, series out that he's gotten some new life of out of. Um, uh, Strudel actually has some really awesome fanfic that she writes. Uh, the link is below as well there. Uh, she finished off her first series. Lots of styrofoam. Uh, Skyrim content in there as well. Very well written. Uh, and she started a new series all up. So uh, go check that out as well. Um, so yeah, lots of good stuff. Um, I'm starving, so I'm, I'm not going to plug everybody who's not here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, go check it out. It's, it's awesome stuff. Uh, until then, until next time, we will take on some vampires. Uh, but I need to... Uh, absorb some nourishment through my guts. Okay, yeah, great. I will, uh, I will link to the new one as well. I will, uh, update the links there too. 
So yeah, great. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and I'll see you next time. And until then, take care of yourself, stay safe and uh, yeah, take it easy.